Who am I? I am Meryl Streep, known as the best actor of my generation. I'll be telling you about my life as a successful actor. Come along on this journey to learn about me. My early life was pretty normal. I was born in Summit, New Jersey and brought up in Bernardsville. I had two siblings, David and Harry William III. My father worked as a pharmaceutical executive. And my mother worked as a commercial artist and an editor as profession. My contributions to this world. I have donated a whopping one million grant to the public theater in New York in 2012. I've also established the Silver Mountain Foundation for arts along with Don Gummer, my husband. The museum has supported places like Butler Museum of American Arts, New York Shakespeare Festival, and much more. In my later life, or basically right now, I'm acting in many different movies. For my latest one was The Laundromat in 2019, while still taking care of my family. I hope you learn more about me and all my great accomplishments, and that I am important to this world, because I inspired many, many actors to follow their dreams. I am Meryl Streep. Imagination is more important than knowledge. Let me introduce myself. I am Albert Einstein, and I'm a physicist. You may, you might know me as the guy who created the equation E equals MC squared. I was originally from Germany, but then moved to America. My parents are Hermann Einstein and Pauline Einstein. I, Albert Einstein, was born on March 14, 1879 in Ulam, Germany. But I grew up and obtained my early abduct, uh, uh, education in Munch, Germany. I was a poor student, and some of my teachers, my teachers thought I might be mentally handicapped, and I was unable to speak fluently at the age of nine. My equation E equals M C squared made an atomic bomb theoretically possible. I was an inventor, mathematician, teacher, author, and last a physicist. As an author, I wrote 16 books. I also have an IQ of 160. One of my last wishes was not to to not have my body studied on. I wanted it to be ashes, but someone managed to steal my brain. And when I passed away, a scientist took my brain for experiments without my family's permission. The scientist l looked at my brain and found out that my brain is different than others than other people's brains. His name was Thomas Harvey, and his experiments and in his experiments. He put my brain in a jar, and pieces of my brain can now be seen at Mutter Mutter Museum in Philadelphia. I was known for many things, like being the first interracial TV couple, first woman to run a major television studio, a woman who married a younger man, first woman in company on TV, a model, the first woman to be a producer, and a few other things. You may know me as Lucy Ball. I starred on the TV show I Love Lucy with my husband, Desi Arnaz. We also appeared in other films, such as Ma'am, Stone Pillow, Where's My and Ours, The Facts of, of Life, The Long Long Trailer, and others. I will take you on a trip to my past, show you my younger years, later years, and everything in between. Join me on a memorable adventure where I grow up and become famous. Early in my years, most of my childhood was shaped by tragedy and lack of money. You'd definitely not hear a laugh come out of my family. Four years after I was born, my father, Henry Ball, died in 1915 of typhoid fever. My mother, Dee Dee Hunt, four years later, remarried to Ed Peterson as they were on their way to Detroit. I was forced to stay behind with Ed's stern and broke mother. Let's say young children wasn't Ed's cup of tea, if you know what I mean. If at age 11, I had finally reunited with my mother. When I came back to Jamestown, at that moment of my life, all I wanted to do was something great. And at age 15, I had finally convinced my mother to let me enroll in a New York drama school. Despite my longing to make a stage to view, my nervousness took over and didn't draw much attention. My contribution to the world was giving women to the right to be funny on or off camera. I also opened other doors for women, such as marrying a younger man or being the first woman to run a production studio. I also became famous along the way. Later in life, I got married to Desi Arnaz, and about 10 years later, had Lucy Arnaz, our first daughter, and two years later, had Desi Arnaz Jr., our first son. Unfortunately, in 1960, 
He got divorced due to his drinking habits. Millions were sad. A year later, I picked up myself and remarried to Gary Martin. We were married until my death in 1983. In 1989, three years later after Desi's death. Trying to fill my shoes would be a big responsibility, even for me. Why, gosh, I don't think I could do it again. I think I lived my life to the fullest, and I lived 77 and still looked 20. Maybe not that young, but who's to judge? So in conclusion, I had a hard childhood, became an actress, TV star, comedian, a parent of two, a wife, and between it all, I was the first female comedian on TV. That must count as something, right? In my opinion, I was a voice and a role model for women. And don't forget to love yourself, because then only everything will fall into line. Hi, I'm Carly Wood, a two-time Olympic gold medalist, two-time FIFA Women's World Cup champion, three-time Olympian, and two-time FIFA Player of the Year. Let me tell you about my story. I was born on July 16, 1982. My life before I started soccer was very tough because my parents did not agree or like the fact that I wanted to start a soccer career, so they kicked me out of the house. I've done a lot of great things for my team, like helped them win the World Cup two times, which made me FIFA Player of the Year. Donations are very important to me. I've donated to Steps for Soldiers and many more. My, right now, I'm currently still in my soccer career and happy as can be doing the work and sport I love. I'm especially happy that my parents are now supporting me as well as for my husband. I decided to marry Brian Hollings in 2016. My husband and I decided to buy a house a year after our marriage and I'm very pleased with our new home. Hope you enjoyed the short summary about my life. Life is not about being rich, popular, or highly educated. It's about being real, being humble, and being kind. And the person that made that quote was me, Lori Elaine Lightfoot. I am 57 years old and I am the first openly gay mayor. I am the youngest of four kids and I have one adopted daughter named Vivian Lightfoot and I married Amy Elshman. I lived with my mother and father, Elijah Lightfoot and Anne Lightfoot. My father worked as a sharecropper and my mother worked at mental hospitals. I have three other siblings and I am the youngest, as I've stated. As I got older, I had to pay for my education. I worked seven jobs. When I became mayor, I invested $6 million to Community Health to the West Side United, the American Medical Association. I have donated to sports teams and more. I have donated to hospitals due to viruses. Before my contributions, I had to run for mayor. It was a lot of hard work, but I am glad I had Amy. We married the day same-sex marriage became legal. I went to universities and got a degree. I am an American politician serving as the 56th mayor of Chicago. I also worked in a private legal practice as a partner at Mayor Brown. As you can see, I am a very important person to our community. Did you know my painting, The Mona Lisa, was actually smiling? Hello, I'm Leonardo da Vinci. I was raised by my parents and had a passion for painting. But you probably know me for painting. I did many other things too. I was actually an inventor. I invented the tank 200 years before it became a thing. There are so many other things about me. I was born in an outhouse outside the village of Anciano, Tuscany. I had no proper form of education and I was homeschooled by my father. My stepmother, Katerina, was a peasant. Not much was known about my childhood, but when I was 14, I started my apprenticeship with other artists. The contributions I made were uh, my paintings. My paintings inspired other artists. One of my greatest contributions was the Mona Lisa. This painting became world famous and still is to this day. Some of my inventions also made people's everyday lives easier. Those are my contributions. In my later life, I mostly painted and invented creations. I was a kind-hearted person and, had, and I had many close relationships with other people, such as family and assistants that I had. I also never married and I didn't have any children of my own. In conclusion, I had a very normal life painting and inventing. I painted one of the most famous paintings and I am now a household name. Thank you for listening about me, Leonardo da Vinci. In this world and the world of tomorrow, we must go forward together or not at all. Hello, I am Hillary Clinton. I am a female politician. In 2015, I was nominated to run for president. In 2016, I ran for president, but I lost against Donald Trump.
On October 26, 1947, I was born. My parents are Dorothy Howell and Hugh Rodham. I was the first one to be born out of my brother and I. My brother Hugh Rodham was born May 26, 1950. From kindergarten to sixth grade, I attended Field Elementary School, and in seventh and eighth grade, I went to Emerson Junior High School. I have been sem senator in 2009. I was the first woman to be really close to becoming president. I gave confidence to other women by doing that. I was married to the 42nd president of the United States, Bill Clinton. We are both in the Democratic Party. On October 11, 1975, I married Bill Clinton. Five years after, I had a daughter. Her name is Chelsea Clinton. She was born February 27th. 1980. Chelsea got married to Mark Mezvinsky on July 31st, 2010. I have three grandchildren. The oldest one is Charlotte Clinton Mezvinsky. Aiden Clinton Mezvinsky is the second old to oldest. My Finally, my youngest grandchild is Jasper Clinton Mezvinsky. I am known for being the third woman to run for president. Some people thought that I shouldn't be president because I am a woman. That is called sexism. Sexism is when men think that women aren't good enough. Now that you have read about my life, it is time to say goodbye. Women can do the same things as men. That's a quote from whenever I was a mathematician for NASA. My full name is Katherine Goebel Johnson. I was born August 26, 1918. My parents are Joshua Coleman and Juliet Coleman. My place of birth is White Sulphur Springs, West Virginia. My family wasn't so rich, so I had to buy my own things. I made people believe in themselves. I will now go on with my life story. I married a lovely gentleman named Colonel James A. Johnson. In my life, I also had three beautiful children, Juliet, Constance, and Catherine. I had two jobs in my lifetime, mathematician and physicist. I am a very nice and kind and happy person. I don't get angry easily. Let's just say I didn't have a childhood that much since I kind of graduated from junior high at the age of 10 and high school at the age of 13. So I didn't really have time for fun and games. So I really don't have much to say, but I do have one exciting thing to say. I contributed my super hard math skills to help the Apollo 11 moon landing. Well, since I got out of college at the age of 21, I think that will be my later life. So here's what happened. I got in, out of college and was one of three African American women to join a program at the time. At the time, it was new, so no one really knew what it was about. Soon later, me and the other two girls became good friends. We would hang out all the time until the program started for real. I had to work late shifts and was running everywhere to go places. I was very tired, so I never really saw the other two girls because they worked somewhere else. But that's how I got to work for NASA. I showed my skills and they saw me work, so I got to help with the Apollo 11 moon landing. I did almost all of the calculations. I started school at the age of six, but was put straight into second grade. I also went to high school at the age of 10 and college at the age of 13. People decided to make a movie about me called Hidden Figures. And sadly, I died in February 24th, 2020 at the age of 101. In conclusion, I am very accomplished and proud. Wondering who I am? Well, let me tell you. I'm Audrey Hepburn, an actress. I'm probably one of the most prettiest actresses you know. I was born on May 4th, 1929, as Audrey Kathleen Houston, but I changed my name to Audrey Hepburn. I was raised by my parents named Ella Van Hoemstra and Joseph Victor Anthony Rolston. I began dancing at five, but that was just my little hobby. <clears throat> After World War II happened, my mother thought it was best for me to go to boarding school. I also took dancing classes there too. When I came back, I started to plan for college. 
My parents were very wealthy and they said that they would pay for it. Instead, I went to London and went to acting school there. I donated to a lot of charities because I love helping people around the world and influencing people to do the same. I married this man named Mel Furry in 1954. We got divorced and I married this other man that I knew was the love of my life. In 1960, I had a son named Sean. And in 1970, I had a son named Luca Dotti. My favorite color is cyan. Also, I had a pet deer because in a movie I was in, the directors didn't know what to do with it. Sadly, I died on January 20th, 1993 of apex cancer. I was only 63 and wished I lived longer. I have showed, I hope I showed goodness to the world and that that's all that matters. Do you know who Dr. Seuss is? If not, I'm a children's books writer. You may, me, you may be familiar with Green Eggs and, and Ham or One Fish, Two Fish, Red Fish, Blue Fish. In fact, I wrote all of those. I am most known for my rhyming books. My career all started when I was born on March 21st, 1904, Springfield, Massachusetts. All my life, I grew up there, and I went to school in Forest Park. I, after I went to Springfield Central High School, I knew I had to go to college, so I did. I went to University Oxford. After I graduated and went on, did what I wanted, illustrate and cartoonist. That's when my re career really all started. It took a long time to write my first book, but finally I wrote and to think I saw on Blueberry Fishery in 1937. After I wrote my first book in 1937, I wrote my second book in 1957. I wrote Cat in the Hat. It was one of my most famous books I've ever made. The third book I published was Green Eggs and Ham in 1960. It got a lot of interviews and questions from all around the world. I wrote the last book on Oh, the Places You'll Go in 1990. In the World War II, I was writing children's books, but after I moved to L.A., California, suddenly I got diagnosed with oral cancer after my dentist found it underneath my tongue. Unfortunately, there's no cure for this type of cancer. For, for my family, everyone who supported me and was very sad and scared for me. I was upset, but my life was great, and I made a lot of great accomplishments in life, such as I was the, I won the Primetime Emmy Award for Outstanding Animation Program, and another one I won was the Children's Legacy, uh, Legacy Award. I spent the last years in my home, and on September uh, 24th, 1991, I sadly passed from oral cancer. Thank you. As you may know, queens and kings, there are plenty of them, but today we are looking for one specific queen. Queen Elizabeth, and that's me. When I was born April 21st, 1926, and my parents gave me the name Elizabeth Alexandra Mary Winster. I came from a pretty rich family. When I was 27, I was crowned queen. This was when my adventure began. In 1947, soon after the royal family returned from a visit to South Africa, they announced my engagement to Prince Philip. Soon we got married and had four kids. Sadly, in 1956, my father died. As I started ruling, I was really, really new to this whole ruling thing. But soon I got used to it. I was 25 years old when I was crowned queen, but my coronation was when I was 27. Since then, I have been ruling for 66 years. Have I owned any pets ever? Well, yes. I have owned 30 corgis in my lifetime. Now I'm still on the throne, and God knows when I'll pass. Well, thank you for listening. Have you ever heard the famous quote, You can't always control the circumstances, only how you react to those circumstances, but you can always control your attitude and your effort. Well, that was my quote. I'm Jenny Finch, here to inspire. My parents, Bev and Doug Finch, and were very supportive throughout my life for me and for my siblings. Speaking of my siblings, I'm the youngest out of two older brothers, Landon and Shane, who are also both very successful. If you're still not sure who I am, this should jog your memory. I played for the Arizona University when I won the Olympics in 2004 and 2008. I was the pitcher. And my number was 27 as that was the year as the year I graduated, that was a retired number. In 2010, I took a break from my softball career and focused on my family. In 2005, I got married to Casey Pagel and on January 15th. Casey was born on April 4th, 1981 and was a, and was a baseball player. Here are some other facts about me. I was born on September 3rd, 1980 in L.A. Miranda, California. I started softball around the ages of 3 to 5. 
I have blonde hair and green eyes. Now do you know who I am? Hi, Jenny Finch. Hi, I'm Elvis Presley. I was born January 8, 1935, and it all started in Tupelo, Mississippi when I was born. When I was 10 years old, it was my first time on stage in a talent, con in a talent show. I got my first guitar when I was 11 years old. I never had singing and guitar lessons. I just had I just watched other people play. I was called the most talented singer and guitar player in the world. People love my music and songs. My show was like a big performance. My fans sing and dance with me on my concerts. When I I was called the king of rock and roll. My popular songs were Love Me Tender, Heartbreak Hotel, Blue Suede Shoes, and Jailhouse Rock. In my whole life, I made around $100 million, and I was a famous singer and actor through the world. I married Priscilla Presley in Las Vegas. We have a, we have a daughter named Lisa Murray. When I was a little boy, I wanted to be a hero in a comic book, in a, in a movie. And my dream came true. I was a very popular singer and actor. I gave my cast concert, I gave my last concert in 1977 in Indianapolis, two months before my death. I hope I didn't bore you with my life story. Hi, Kate Middleton and the Duchess of Cambridge. I am looking forward to help as much as I can. That is a quote when I became Duchess. Being Duchess is fun and hard at the same time. A fun fact is I once trained for two months to race across the English Channel with all female dragon boat crew. I was born in Berkshire, England on January 9, 1982. My full name is Catherine Elizabeth Middleton. I share a name with the Queen. I attended St. Andrews University, where I met Prince William. We were studying together for tests. In October 2010, he proposed to me on our vacation in Kenya with his mother, Princess Diana's ring. The next year in April, we got married. I am very athletic and love to play sports. My favorites are tennis, hockey, and netball. I have helped teach kids how to play sports and to have fun. I was recently announced the new Royal Patron of Family Action, a charity founded in England in 1869. The role of the Royal Patron for the charity in which so provides support regarding financial and mental health issues for children. Right now I am celebrating my ninth wedding anniversary. I have three amazing children, Charlotte, Lewis, and George. We all live in Kensington Palace. I look forward to helping those in need, especially children. I am excited to become queen one day. I was 24 years old and created the most famous flag known as the American flag. Why would they choose me? What could have happened if they didn't choose me? Did I fail school or succeed? What did your family think? Well, these, these questions will be answered in my life story. I was born on January 1st, 1752 in, in the city of Philadelphia. I was also the eighth child born out of 17 others. My parents were both Quakers. Since my parents were both Quakers, I was sent out to a Quaker school. Then I met William Webster, which was the boss of workshop that I ended up working for. In Webster's workshop, I learned how to sew mattresses, chair covers, and window blinds. Then. I had gotten expelled from my Quaker school because I double acted on my defiance, but I did complete my studies. I may make this also sound very easy or very hard, but if you see the contributes I had to make to make this flag, you might change your flag on both. You might change your mind on both of them. My first, my first was that got me expelled. Was that the one that got me expelled from school? because of my defiance. Then I had gotten my heart broken by two men until I found the white run. Lastly, I had gotten, I had also gotten heartbroken. I had also broken the rules at my school, risking me getting into more trouble than just getting expelled. 
So these were the three things I risk for my for the flag. Since we talked about my early life, how about we talk about the year of my end life? In 1774, I started my own my own obstetricary business where I was the bo- where I was the boss. Then in 1775, I met up with the committee that assigned me the American Flag Project. On 1776, I started the flag pro- flag project. Lastly, in 1783, I met the love of my life but died on on 1836 sadly. Now it's time, now it's time to speak about my great accomplishments and interesting facts. My great accomplishments were that I got married to the one I love, made my own business, and made the first American flag. I also I also have to answer the questions that were in the beginning. They had chosen me because of my creativity. If they didn't choose me, I would I wouldn't be famous and the flag would not look the same as it is now. Lastly, I did complete my studies, studies at school. My family thought I always had a bright future. In the end, it was all a happy ending. Good afternoon. Have you heard of the American Red Cross? Well, let me introduce myself. My name is Claire Brighton and I'm the founder of this organization. In the next few minutes, you're going to get to know me very well. From becoming a teacher, to a nurse in the Civil War, to me creating the American Red Cross. Hope you're sitting comfortably. My life was full of education. One day I helped my older brother, who was very sick. But he repaid me he repaid me by teaching me something not every girl knows. Carpentry. It was carpentry. At age fifteen I became a teacher because I wanted to educate teenagers. A car A contribution I made was the American Red Cross. The American Red Cross is an organization that I can help by donating blood to help kids all over the world. After I resigned from the American Red Cross, I made an organization called the National Aid Society. The National Aid Society is something that helps community aid programs. Then I lived on my days. In my life, I was mostly I mostly help people, like in the way I helped as a nurse. In 1881, I founded the American Red Cross. Then I lived on my day surrounded by the people that I love. My biography is about Michael Jordan. I was born on February 17, 1962. My parents, James R. Jordan and D. Loris Jordan, was my parents. My location where I'm from was Brooklyn, New York. My school was Ordon Elementary School, Elmsley and Laney High School. That's where my schools were. My college, where I went to college was University of North Carolina, at Chapel Hill. Hobby, my hobby was basketball and golf. Craziest facts, I have five kids. My favorite clothes were regular shirt and joggers and shoes. The teams uh, that I played in was the Chicago Bulls and the White, the Chicago White Sox. Other projects I did was I was in a movie called Space Jam. My character, er, I am determined and honest and perfect. My goals were I when I was growing up I wanted to be a baseball player but I became a basketball player. I was a very creative scientist. I discovered many things and I helped the world to differently. 
I changed the way people looked at women, and I inspired many people and helped the world. I was born on November 7, 1867, in Warsaw, Poland. My family was very poor. I had three sisters and one older brother. I attended an elementary school where my parents worked. I went to two different universities. They were the University of Paris and Flying University. I studied mathematics, physics, and chemistry. I got my master's degree in physics and earned another degree in mathematics. I was the first woman to be a professor at the University of Paris. In 1889, I discovered the two, ra the two elements, radium and polonium. After I discovered the two elements, I became very popular in my town. When I was 36, I won the Nobel Prize in Physics. I was the first woman to win the Nobel Prize. I was 44 when I won the Nobel Prize again in Chemistry. On July 26, 1895, I got married to, to Pierre Curry. A couple of years later, I had, to, I had two little girls Irene and Eve Curry. Sadly, on July 4, 1934, I died. For a while, nobody knew why or how, but a couple years later, they found out it was because of the radiation. I studied it for a long time, and I never had any protection on me. I know that I was important, and I was also proud. Say lofty goes for yourself and believe that with hard work, you can achieve that. My name is Ataj Mohammed. I used to do fencing, and I was a freshman job to compete in Olympic fencing. I was born in December 4, 1985, Maplewood, New Jersey. I was a saber and fencer, which is sword fighting. I was the first Muslim American athlete to win an Olympic. I started fencing while I was thir 13 years old and began my journey. My family was middle class when I was younger. I went to Columbia High School, graduated, and got my dual bachelor's degree. When I was younger, I was always into sports and moving around. I'm glad I got into fencing because I found a way to be modest and play a sport that I love. My parents always encouraged me and my siblings to do our best and play sports. My mom's name is Denise Mohammed and my dad's name is Eugene Mohammed. My dad worked as a police officer and my mom worked as a special ed teacher. I have four other siblings and we all did sports when we were younger. When I first tried fencing, I didn't care for it, but I soon changed my mind. I saw fencing as as an opportunity to obtain sports scholarships to a prejudice university. The main reason I did fencing was because of the modest outfits. I went to practice every day for three hours. I used to do fencing and I still think that's part of me. As you have heard from me, I did fencing but soon stopped after I got a hand injury. Later, I meet, started making books about my story. One of the books is called Proud which is about my story about fencing. I also made a clothing company with my sister that's called Luella. It is modest clothes for other hijabis who need to find nice clothes that cover themselves. I always wanted to help other Muslim women encourage themselves and to be themselves. Now that I stopped doing fencing, I have been on TV talking about my story. I've also made a website for other Muslim girl, women and girls who are learning about the hijab. I also made books about being a hijabi while playing my sport. I try and help Muslim women and girls achieve their goals and become religious. I am so glad I can help other Muslim women and girls to have a good future and I hope each other harder to become successful. I am a sports ambassador supporting Muslim women and girls through sports. One of my accomplishments is my fencing because I've always wanted to help other Muslim women and girls through sports. I also made history in 2016, which is also a big accomplishment. I told my story about when I was getting bullied for wearing a hijab. I inspired other Muslim women and girls wearing the hijab and keeping head up. my head up is always going to be another one of my accomplishments. I am so glad I learned doing sports with my hijab and being able to help mo lots of Muslim girls and to keep their head up. Who is Pele? Pele is a famous soccer player who was born in the year of 1940. Pele started his soccer career in 1950. I started my computer league during 1956. And in soccer, I had made 1,280 goals. 
In soccer history, Pele scored 650, but in the league matches, 694, and a total of 1,281 in 1,363 games. In Pele's early life, he couldn't be able to afford to go to school or food. Pele had to survive without being able to have a full lunch or breakfast. After a couple years later, Pele's father got enough money to afford cleats for Pele. Ever since Pele had been given getting money, he had been ma- been contributing to donate money to the homeless and charities. Pele had been tr- trying so hard to give a home to everybody and being able to serve food to them. After Pele's soccer career, he got married to three people. Their names were Rosemary Dos, Reese Trouble, and Esri Namento. Pele had seven kids, and their names were Edney Ho, Santra, Johua, Kelly, Flavia, Celestio, and Jennifer. Interesting facts about Pele. In Pele had made 1,201 goals and had made the competitive league the first year he had joined. He also had been married three times, and they all had been married for 10 years. Finally, Pele had been changed millions of kids around the world by making them want to play soccer or other sports. I'm not the next Usain Bolt or Michael Phelps. I'm the first Simone Biles. Hi, my name is Simone Biles. I started gymnastics really young. I was adopted by my grandparents, Ronald and Nellie Biles. My real father left when I was little, and my real mother took drugs, so my grandparents took me in. Now I'm the best gymnast in the world. My mother, Shannon Biles, was unable to keep me, so I was raised by my grandparents, Ronald and Nellie Biles. Later, I moved with my grandparents to Spring, Texas. But my siblings and I were split up. The two youngest, me and Andrea, went with our grandparents, and the two oldest, Tevin and Ashley, went with my mother's aunt, Harriet. I fell in love with gymnastics after a field trip to the gym. Then my parents, Ronald and Nellie Bilo, started homeschooling me because my dream was gymnastics and they wanted me to achieve it. I won a medal on the uneven bars and and I became the 10th female in the world to have won the championship medal on every event. Even though the uneven bars were not my easiest event, I still won a gold medal on that too. This shows whatever you put your mind to, you can do. In 2016, I won the gold medal for the USA, but three years earlier, I wasn't that good. In 2013, I was competing, but I kept falling and tripping. Then, when I was doing the floor exercise, I twisted my ankle, and I couldn't compete for the rest of the time. Later on, I was able to win gold medals in all of the competitions. All in one night. Everything you do needs a little practice. I became the most decorated gymnast in the world after the 2016 Olympics. I won an all-around title, winning the gold medals in the four events. Today, I have 20 medals and four are gold. I overcame poverty, even though when I felt like the world was falling apart. Now, I visit foster homes to meet kids like me. I showed awareness to children that they could also have a happy ending. You can do anything you set your mind to. Bye. Hello, my name is Vincent Van Gogh. I was born on March 30th, 1833. At this point, no one knows that I'm going to become a famous artist. My father is a pastor and my mother is an amateur artist. I guess that's how I got my talent. Growing up as a child, I was always a serious, I was always serious, quiet, and thoughtful. Art has always been my true love. I, I struggle with mental health issues that no one knows about. Art helps me feel normal. Soon, because of my mental health issues, I was put into an asylum. This is where I painted 900 of my best art pieces. Shortly after, I spent time in London. That was the best time of my life. At age 37, the voice got the best of me, and I shot myself. I didn't get famous, and I didn't get famous, and I died poor. I died poor and alone. Until years later, I became famous. Brave. That describes me. Pocahontas is my name. I am from Waramoco, Virginia, and I am in the Powhatan tribe. My father is the strong leader Powhatan. My mother died during childbirth. People believe I was born around 1595.
I am best known for saving the life of English Captain John Smith. Pocahontas isn't my real name. It was my nickname given by my father. It means playful one. My real name is Matawaka. Where I lived, there were no schools, and my people didn't have a written language. When I was about 12, men came to our village coming for gold. But my father captured John Smith and was threatening to kill him. When John Smith first came to Jamestown, we became friends, but that was forbidden. When the day came, I rushed over to where he was being killed and placed my hand on top of his and said no. Father, let John, father then let John Smith go. When John Smith left, it was because he had a gun wound and had to sail back to England. After that, I thought he was dead. In 1613, I was taken hostage by Captain Samuel Argyll. He was hoping to use me to negotiate a permanent peace with my father. One year later, I got married to tobacco farmer John Ralph. One year after, we had our son Thomas Ralph. In 1616, the Virginia Company wanted to prove they had met their goal of converting Native Americans to Christianity. So John Ralph, me, and our own son Thomas, and a dozen Powhatan Indians accompanied Dale on the trip. In London, I was referred to as Lady Rebecca Ralph. In March 1617, we set sail for Virginia, but we hardly made progress when I became gravely ill and was taken ashore. People think I died of possibly pneumonia or tuberculosis. Much of my life has been seen in movies or books. I was instrumental to maintaining relations between my father and the Jamestown colonists, and is believed the first Powhatan Indian to convert Christianity. I am remembered as a courageous, strong woman who left a great impression on colonial America. I am William James Sittis. When I was two, I was a child bride. I can read the New York Times. When I was two, my mom and dad's name names are Sarah Sittis and Boria Sittis. My dad's jobs are psychology, and he's a scientist. My mother's job is unknown. When I was nine, I tried to I tried going to Harvard University, but they said no, when you're 11. So when I was 11, I went to Harvard. I was a, a child prodigy when I was little. My parents taught me a lot of stuff. I didn't have a normal life because I spent my life learning. By the time I was five, I could read two languages. I could speak five languages when I was five. I went to Harvard when I was 11. I made Vindergut, which is a language People can use Vindergut as a mix of French, German, Latin, Greek, and other Romance languages. I made the Anumet and the Immuant, which is a book on dark matter. I also made the book called The Tribes and the States, which is about American child prodigy. Lower courts had dismissed me as a public fig figure when no right to challenge personal publicity. I died from a Serb Suburnial Hermage in 1944 in Boston at the age of 46. My father died in 1923 at the age of 56. I never really liked the cr a crowd or a wife and kids. They would distract me. I have more IQ than Albert Einstein. I learned 25 language languages by the time I was an adult. I made the headlines in the early 20th century as a child prodigy, as an amazing intellect. My IQ was estimated to be 50 to 100 points higher than Albert Einstein's. Thank you. Hi there. I have a question for you. Who is the world's most best golfer? Well, of course, it's me. Eldrick Tatwood. You can call me Tiger Woods for short. I am here to tell you all about my lifetime. I was born on December 30th, 1975 in Cypress, California. I was an only child of an African-American officer named Earl Dennison Woods and a Thai mother named Kultida Pumswada Woods. When I was a child, my father began calling me Tiger in honor of a fellow soldier and friend who had the same nickname. I joined many contributions, including Caddy for a Care, Rainforest Foundation Fund, and Trainers Hospital for Children. I did this to help many children in need. I started going to Stanford University, but never received a full degree. I left after two years to play professional golf. While I was there, I studied economics. In 
1996, I became Sportsman of the Year and PGA Tour Rookie of the Year. On April 13, 1997, I won my, the major, the Masters, in a record-breaking fashion and became the tournament's youngest winner at age 21. In 2000, I won, PG, I won the PGA Championship. It was my third consecutive victory. My father died May 3, 2006, at age 74 in Cypress, California, while my, while my mother is still alive. During my lifetime, I won 82 official PGA Tour events in total, and I'm still waiting to win more as we get older. I am 44 and living a long life. Next time you get on the golf course, make sure to take a thought of me, Tiger Woods. Success isn't about how much money you make. It's about the difference you make in people's lives. I was the first African-American first lady of the United States. My name is Michelle Obama. My life has consisted of many adventures, some of which I will share with you today. I was born on January 17, 1964. My brother, my mother's name is Marianne Robinson, and my father's name was Fraser Robinson. I also have an older brother named Craig. We grew up living in the South Shore neighborhood of Chicago. I had a good childhood. We played games like Monopoly. My dad became sick when I was young, so I did my best to be a good student by getting good grades. Also by being a good daughter and staying out of trouble. As first lady, I served a role model for women and worked as an advocate for poverty, awareness, education, nutrition, physical activity, and healthy eating. I supported American designers and was considered a fashion icon. Currently, I'm enjoying my life with my husband, Brock. Our two daughters are away at college, and we have a lot more downtime to focus on our personal projects. For example, I just finished a Netflix documentary called Becoming. My life has been a wonderful, fulfilling journey, from obtaining a law degree to becoming a national advocate. I wouldn't change a thing. I look forward to many more accomplishments and continuing to make a difference in people's lives. Well, my name is Barack Obama. I was the 44th president of the United States, serving for eight years from 2009 to 2017. I served this long because I had two terms. One term is being president for four years. In this passage, you will learn about my early life, contributions, and more. If you want to know more, keep listening. I was born on August 4th, 1961 in Honolulu, Hawaii. My parents were Barack Obama and Aunt Donna. Soon after my birth, unfortunately, my father left. A few years later, my parents decided to divorce. Soon after, my mother married someone else that she also loved, that she also fell in love with. We moved to Indonesia, where my half sister was born. Several incidents in Indonesia left my parents worried. So when I was 10, I was sent back to Hawaii to live with my grandparents. My mother and half-sister later joined me. Most of the contributions I made were when I was 44 person of the United States. So let me tell you a few. One of my contributions was that I was doing everything that I could to make the world a better place, but present. That includes giving speeches, and even inviting people over to dinner and giving them tours of the White House. When I was president of the United States, I did many things. Now, I am no longer president as someone else took over. I now spend my time at home with my family, especially during this time around. I continue to live in Washington, D.C., it's just this time in a little part from the White House. Today, I'm mostly known for being President of the United States. But, other people know me for what I did as President. Many of my major accomplishments were when I was, when I was the President. In my opinion, my life is pretty crazy. Anyways, if you're still there, thank you very much for listening. 
Hello, my name is Anthony David Gonzalez. I was born in Torrance, California on February 27, 1971. I have one brother whose name is Chris Gonzalez. Growing up, my mother worked two jobs to take care of Chris and I. My mother's name is Judy Gonzalez. I attended Huntington Beach High School for grades K through 12 and the University of Berkeley, California for my college career. I was drafted in the 1997 NFL Draft, 13th overall. I played the first 12 seasons of my career on the Kansas City Chiefs before retiring after five seasons with the Atlanta Falcons. I got married to October Gonzalez and made 14 Pro Bowls in that time. After I retired, started the Shadow Buddies Foundation for kids with medical conditions and so they could get education. I'm still alive and well at the age of 44. Do you know the longest serving First Lady of the United States of America? It was Eleanor Roosevelt. She served in politics for 17 years, 12 of which she was the First Lady and four more years being the First Lady of New York as well as she was in the Red Cross and helped many African Americans. My full name is Anna Eleanor Roosevelt. I was born on October 11, 1884 in New York. My family was pretty wealthy. My father, Elliot Bullock Roosevelt, was an American socialite, as well as my mother, Anna Hall Roosevelt. I was born into a family of six. Sadly, when I was eight, my parents died. Because of these events, I was sent to live with my grandmother. On March 17, 1905, I married my husband, Franklin D. Roosevelt. I made amazing accomplishments in my lifetime and proved that women could do anything they put their mind to. I accomplished being an author, being the longest serving first lady of the United States of America, and being active in politics. I served my four terms in office with my husband, Franklin D. Roosevelt. As well, when he got sick, I was determined to keep him active in politics. I wrote autobiographies about my life and politics. Even with bumps along the way, I didn't let that stop me. Some of my amazing accomplishments and bumps along the way led to who I am today. Examples. My husband got elected to be president in 1933. Because of this event, I became the first lady. I was able to take flying lessons with Amelia Earhart. I got inspired to write books about my life in politics. I think Eleanor Roosevelt created memories that will live with us forever. Eleanor Roosevelt was a great woman and inspired many women to get active in politics. Getting angry doesn't solve anything. My name is Grace Kelly and I'm an actor. I was born November 12, 1929. My parents are Margaret Catherine Kelly and Jack Kelly, sir. I have a brother named John B. Kelly Jr. and two sisters named Margaret Kelly and Elizabeth Ann Kelly. While I was filming a movie, I met this man named Prince Rainer. I retired my job as an actor at age 26 to marry Prince Rainer. In 1956, we had three children. Their names are Stephanie, Caroline, and Albert II. While I was going back home, I had a stroke which caused me to lose control. I died that night at 10.55 p.m. Never interrupt someone doing something you said couldn't be done. I'm Amelia Earhart, an American aviator. I was born on July 24, 1897. I saw my first plane at a state fair, and I wasn't very impressed. I looked up to my teacher, Netta Snook. I was an inspiration to many women, and I showed that you can do whatever you set your mind to. I was born to Edwin and Amy Earhart, and I had a sister named Meryl. I grew with my grew up with my grandparents, Alfred and Amelia Earhart, in Atchison, Kansas, until I was 12. My grandparents were very wealthy, so I attended a private school. In 1909, I went to live with my parents again. While I was in school, my father was battling alcoholism. After that, I never lived with him. I moved to Chicago, Illinois, with my mom and my sister. When I finished high school, I was known as A.E., the girl in brown who walks alone. I contributed a lot to my home country. I was the first woman to fly solo across the Atlantic. During World War I, I was a nurse aide in Toronto, Canada. I was a best-selling author. Um, I set a woman, uh, woman's altitude record and uh, many other records. 
In April 1928, I received a phone call asking if I would be the first woman, second person to fly so, to fly across the Atlantic, to be the first woman to fly across the Atlantic. I agreed, but wouldn't be able to fly. I started my own fashion line, and everyone could buy it. My husband helped me become the first woman, second person to become to fly across so, solo across the Atlantic. I took off from Harbor Grace, Newfoundland. When I was almost 40, I decided to fly around the world. I went with my navigator, Fred Noonan. The rest of the trip, we stopped in New Guinea. The rest of the trip would be over the Pacific. My last communication was at 8.43 a.m. We are running north and south. They searched for me for over two years. I was declared dead January 5, 1939. I wrote my, in 1928, I wrote my first book and many others. On February 7, 1931, I married George Putnam, my publisher. I had two stepchildren. My mother always encouraged me to fly. My father, however, was afraid of flying. I was good friends with First Lady Eleanor Roosevelt. I'm still an inspiration to many people. I am Brew Breeze. In life, I've had major ups and downs. For starters, I am one of the greatest quarterbacks who ever lived. I was not looked at when I first started. At the time, I was on a team called the Chargers. They didn't like me because of my height and how slow I am. When they released me, I went to the Saints. I was born in 1979 to my parents, Eugene and me. I had two siblings. My brother was named Reed and my sister was named Audrey. When I was eight, my parents got divorced. This made me and my siblings have to share time between both parents. Being raised separately was hard, but I developed a stronger relationship with both parents. I gave $5 million to the state of Louisiana while they were in hard times. I also donated to a foundation I created for cancer patients. I'm currently a football player still in the NFL. Last season, I broke another quarterback record. I am on the New Orleans Saints as the starting quarterback. I am still one of the top quarterbacks in the NFL at age 41. In 2004, I won Comeback Player of the Year. In 2008, I won Offensive MVP. I won a Super Bowl in 2009, and I was the MVP of that Super Bowl. In 2013, I was selected for a Pro Bowl. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Do you know a girl who won the four main things at the Grammys, who got famous by accident, who broke Guinness World Records for being the youngest female at number one on UK album charts and for having the most simulations hot US hot 100 entries by a female? Well, I do, and that's because that's me. Hi, I'm Billie Eilish. When I was born, I wasn't technically wealthy. You can almost call me poor. My first job was as a horse rider. I loved horses growing up and my parents couldn't afford horse riding lessons. So I took it as a job instead. I have an older brother, Phineas, and how I mentioned in plenty of interviews, we, are, we were like best friends. Even though my brother and I don't have equal fame, we have the same talent. Later on in my life, I was a dancer, but I sprained my ankle during a concert in Italy, which I had just sprained a few weeks before. Because of the pain, I ran off stage crying. That caused me to stop dancing. I haven't technically made a donation yet, but I am planning to in the future. I said that I will donate a portion of my earrings to Atlanta during a concert. Right now, I am a singer-songwriter and I spend my time writing music with my brother Phineas. My first song, Ocean Eyes, came out in 2017, but I wrote it way before it came out. My latest song is No Time to Die and it came out in 2020. Right now, I'm considered a great singer and a star. I'm proud and I'm grateful that i shared my singing with the world otherwise i wouldn't be where i am right now thank you for listening to my speech has anyone been on the moon my answer would be yes and by saying yes i am talking about myself neil armstrong the first man that walked on the moon i was not alone in my long trip i was a compliment by collins and andrew I am very proud of me because I am still the only man who done this and who had an honor to speak to billions of people listening at home. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. So let, let's begin our journey. When I was still a kid, my dream was to become a pilot. So let me tell you about my childhood. I was born near Wakapota, Ohio. 
I had a sister and a brother. My first solo flight has happened on my 16th birthday. At age 17, I began studying at Purdue University. My greatest contribution was to NASA as a te as as test pilot because it gave me a me ability to land lunar module on the moon which gave every human on earth knowledge about space and the and our place among the stars the other contribution was becoming a professor in university of cincinnati and and be able to talk more about moon mission in my later life i a, I became a pilot. After being a pilot, I went to work at NASA. I tried to go to space one day. In Ju July 20, 1969, I smiled inside to lunar in, in inside the lunar module while seeing the moon. After my my journey, I settled in Ohio, where I became a professor. My greatest accomplishment is being the first man on the moon. This has this was hard to accomplish, but I did it. Imagine having 714 home runs in your life's career as a baseball player, or growing up on the streets of Baltimore, Maryland, in an orphanage, and creating the home run. Now, I was a baseball star. In my early life, I lived in an orphanage. I had a mom and a dad, but my dad died in a bar fight. I made home runs at my orphanage. That is how I started. In my later life, I became a star. I made the home run a thing. I, I made 700 home runs. I lived a long, long time. I was a hero to a lot of people. Had and still have so many fans. I was named the Big Bambino. I lived a great life. I am still remembered today at the Ultimate Baseball League, scoring 714 home runs in my baseball career as a baseball player. I was the first man to score a home run, ultimately inventing the act of home runs nationwide. Being a home run genius as a young boy, I am thought of. Uh, of as the best baseball player of all time. Hello, my name is Jerome Allen Seinfeld, also known as Jerry Seinfeld. I was born on August 29th, 1954, and I'm most famously known for my comedy shows, acting, writing, producing, and directing. My mother and father, Betty and Kalaman Seinfeld, were very close to me. My father, was an American soldier of the Amer Hungarian War, and he also served in World War II, which played a very big part on American history. My mother, on the other hand, was basically just a stay-at-home mom, but I loved her very dearly. I grew up in the city of Brooklyn in New Jersey, and I couldn't have asked for a better childhood. I honestly have no complaints. But as we were growing up, uh, we were mainly middle class, not too poor, not too rich. And I attended Massapequa High School, and of course, I did graduate, thankfully. I did go to college as well, specifically Queens College, City New University of New York. I studied communications and theater, and I also got my college degree. I have a spouse. Her name is Jessica Seinfeld, and we got married on De December 29th, 1999, and she is an author philanthropologist, television producer, and television program creator. I also have three wonderful children with her. Their names are Sasha, Kellen, and Julian Seinfeld, and I love them very dearly. 
My current occupation is stand-up comedy, and comedy is, of course, a form of art, and a comedian's main job is to make people laugh, obviously. And it's also normally a one-man job, and here I am, one man. <laughs> Anywho, I am just under six feet, 5'11", and I am normally an optimistic and happy-go-lucky kind of guy, and I have can't remember a time in my life where I haven't been happy or upbeat. And one of my favorite hobbies is collecting cars, and one of my favorite cars is a Porsche. One of my favorite quotes or sayings is, sometimes the road less traveled is less traveled for a reason, and I live by that. And one of my favorite speeches, um, or one of my most famous ones, is the Peabody Awards acceptance speech. One of the coolest things I did was on this Netflix show, my Netflix show, comedians getting feet. I got to meet all these amazing comedians from such different backgrounds and stories, and it was so cool, and I couldn't have asked for a better experience. One of my favorite, favorite, favorite things that uh, has ever happened to me is 2005, Comedy Central crowned me as the 12th greatest stand-up comedian of all time. I, As you can see, my life has been very interesting. My name is Richard Plyer. I was born in Peoria, Illinois, December 1, 1963. My family was very poor. My mom was a prostitute and my dad was a boxer. I spent most of my time with my grandma. My first ever job was a comedian. Then I went to the army. Lots of people said, then I came back. Lots of people said I was the best comedian. Because of me, there's a five second delay on TV because I had no filter. My net worth is 40 million. One fact about me, I was the first ever African American to perform in and live in and live in front of white audience. I I was very nervous and I love animals. One of my sayings was friends take up time and I don't have time. I sadly died in December 10th, 2005. Who took my Dorito? Oh, hi. Or hello. Uh, my name is James Cook or Captain Cook. Call me by whatever. I will give gold to you if you would let me just journey or explore your land. I would love to explore your land. I am 37 years old. Huh. I'm very old for my age. I came from United Kingdom or Europe, as you say. 52 million in population. I normally speak Irish. But since you speak English, I'll talk to you in English. Well, Great Britain is my normal, or as you would call continent, or United Kingdom. Well, my education is farther more exquisite. Well, I would go to college or not. Oh, wait, I didn't go to college. Oh, my God. Oh, my memory loss is so exquisite. Uh, maybe I did go to college. I'm not sure anymore. But if you would like to know more about me, I can tell you. I still went to postage school for eight years. Or seven. Or nine. Or seven. Or six. Oh, uh, never mind. I studied as a worker or farm worker, or I just went the risk and studied as a worker. Hmm. And I do have a lot of money, like a lot, way more than you probably would ever have. But um, for far the more exquisite, 
things to know. You should know more about me. I went to high school. I did graduate. Very more. I also went to elementary school. Very more in postage postage school as well. But I didn't get a college degree. Very more, sadly. I wish. Oh my god, I keep forgetting. I have five kids. Oh my god. Also, my wife is pregnant again. Very exquisite. Welcome to Walt Disney's meeting today. I'll be doing a speech about myself. I'm the one who owns Disney World, Disneyland, and California, and Orlando, Florida. I'm the one who created the old Disney movies like Snow White and the Seven Doors, Peter Pan, and Sleeping Beauty. Kids are having fun at Disney World and in Disneyland. I hope you come to. Hope you enjoy my speech. I was born on December 5th, 1901 in Chicago, Illinois. I moved to Marceline, Missouri on 1906. My sister, Ruth Flora Disney, was born on December 6th, 1903, two years after I was born in this world. I began drawing, painting, and selling the pictures to my neighbors. Then I moved to Kansas City, where I love a love of train. I've been drawing a few stuff now for for a project for building a park for, for kids to play in. When I grown up, I made Mickey Mouse to a cartoon for kids to war, to watch. Then I made more stuff for Disney. I made my first movie called Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. I made Disneyland in California and Walt, and Walt Disney World in Orlando, Florida. The kids loved the two places. After I built a park for kids, I've been drawing, having a great life. I've been into Hollywood and made movies for kids. I still have my job to own Disney and help my kids and my wife after work. I've been talking, ca- taking care of my kids, which were Danny Disney Miller and Sharon May Disney. Then I'm then I die of lung cancer. My greatest accomplishments were accomplishments were my fa- were having Disney and my family. In my childhood, I've been playing Peter Pan in the school play. I almost sold vacuums for a living. Then I did Disney. I did. I did gain so much money for my family because of my accomplishment of owning Disney Land and Disney World. I voiced Mickey Mouse and wanted those cartoons for him. In my opinion, I think his life was amazing. Do you know who Diana Francis Spencer was? Well, you might be more familiar with the name Princess Diana. I was best known for my shyness, but my charisma and friendliness helped me survive through the tragical collapse of my marriage. This all was in the till July 1st in 1961 when I was born in Sandringham, Norfolk, UK. After I finished school at the Institute of Alpen Wiedemann, I started many small jobs like a dance instructor, a preschool teacher, and many more. My family originally wasn't part of the royal family until July 29, 1981. I married Charles Prince of Wales and was given the title of Princess Diana. After I married Prince Charles, I had two kids, Prince William and Prince Henry. They were like a dream come true to me. I also helped a lot of charities. I donated and helped all the people in need. Because of this, I made people view the royal family in a whole different way. I always loved seeing all the smiles on children's faces. Some people said that our wedding was out of a fairy tale, but that didn't last long. On August 28, 1996, Prince Charles and I divorced. My heart was broken. My heart was broken, and it was very hard, but with thanks to all my supporters, I got through it. My life was a journey with with my wonderful two kids, my tragical divorce, becoming part of the royal family, becoming a fashion icon in the 80s and 90s, and more. But sadly, on August 31st, 1997, one year and four days after my divorce, I passed away in a car accident. I was rushed to the hospital, and shortly after about two hours, I passed away. My death was very unexpected and very tragical. Six days later, I was laid to rest at Althrope. One day, Penny Manning started playing pro football. Penny Manning played football for 18 years. He was the number one pick in the 1998 NFL draft. He played for the Indianapolis Colts for 14 years and had the last four years with the Broncos. Penny Manning won five MVP awards and two Super Bowls. Penny Manning was born on March 24, 1976. He was the son of Archie Manning and Olivia Manning. He had an older brother named Cuba Manning and a younger brother named Eli Manning. 
Peyton Manning attended Isidore Newman School, where he graduated high school. He went to the University of Tennessee. The family was a wealthy couple. Manning's Payback Foundation donated, to, donated money to the youth clubs and programs in Tennessee, Indiana, and Colorado since 1999. In the, the Payton Manning Scholarship at the University of Tennessee that have been awarded to 25 students. Payton Manning got married to Ashley Thompson in 2001 on March 17th. They had kids in 2011. Their names are mostly Thompson and Marshall Williams. He won one Super Bowl with the Broncos and one with the Colts. He had a 200 winning career and tied with Brett Favre. Peyton, Peyton Manning retired from football in 2016. He had the last four seasons with the Broncos. Peyton Manning holds the record for MVP awards that he won five times. He, all, he was also awarded with the Offensive Player of the Year. Had a career high in passing touchdowns and set the record with 539. He had the most passing yards, 71,940. He had 200 wins, and that is why Peyton Manning was one of the best players in the NFL. He also had a foundation called the Payback Foundation, who donated to the youth clubs and programs. I think he is a good guy. story is as familiar to Americans as any children's fable. I was born in a log cabin. I became the 16th president. I freed the slaves and saved the Union. I was assassinated in Ford's theater. Before I died, booed for a dramatic letter. I said speeches and quotes in on September 22, 1862. I lead an interesting life. My crazy thing is I was a wrestler. My favorite things are reading and music and pets. My favorite foods are bacon, corn cakes, gingerbread men, oysters, and apples. I was born on February 12, 1809 in Norman Long Cabin on the St. Mary's Farm South of Holdenville in Hardin County, Kentucky. My siblings were Sarah Lane Grisby and Thomas Lincoln Jr. My major accomplishments include emancipation, proclamation, homestead acts, and the sanction of the United States Department of Agriculture historically. I'm one of the most effective and including United States president. I was the only president to have a passion. I invented a vice to free steamboats that ran aground. I practiced law without a degree. I had about 18 months of formal schooling. I wanted women to have the vote in 1836. The future president was a suffrage before it became fashionable. I was a big animal lover, but I wouldn't hunt or fish. So, Good morning. Have you ever lost hope when times got tough? Many people through lots of hard times that made change their lives forever. I'm Jakey Ranning, and I was one of those people who, for many years, struggled to life as normal. Once I discovered a magical world, I realized it was time to turn on the light. At one point in my life, I was raising my daughter alone and barely had any money. It was hard to get back up again, but I'm glad I did because I got to read a whole different book series for everyone to enjoy. I was born on July 31st, 1965, as Jerry Rowling to be Jerry and Rowling. I was born in Yate, a tiny United Kingdom. As a child, I like reading stories usually about rabbits. My family and I moved to house twice when I was a child. 
That was nine. My family actually moved to a small town, Touchville, United Kingdom. In Touchville, I loved to spend time outside in the countryside, but I didn't leave my school in Touchville. However, at school during lunch, I used to make up stories for my friends to hear. After I finished school, I went to college at the University of Exeter and studied French there. I graduated in 1986 and then started looking for a job. In 1990, during a delayed train ride, I gathered up many notes for a book series called Harry Potter. Later, I moved to Portugal to work as a teacher and met George Arantes when I married a year later. And a year after that, we had my daughter, Jessica. That same year, we got divorced and I wasn't left with any money at all. I kept on planning out the Harry Potter books from my earlier notes and finished the first book in 1997. I fortunately got rejected 12 times by publishers for this book before it was finally published. This inspired people to work hard and never give up. My book series became very popular, and in just five years, I became a multi-millionaire. Soon enough, I was a famous author. After I finished the last book of the Harry Potter series in 2007, I had already earned over a billion dollars. However, I donated almost all my money to charity in 2011. I currently live in Scotland with my husband, Neil Murray, who I married a year earlier in 2001. Uh, Neil and I had two more kids, David and Mackenzie, along with my earlier daughter, Jessica. I'm still alive today and enjoy baking and relaxing my free time. It's amazing how my life changed for the better so quickly. Today, my book series is very famous. Some of my books had details from my childhood, such as the train station in Harry Potter, King's Cross, which was also the train station where my parents met. Both of my other books are for adults, but whoever the audience is, I love to write or read for them. I'm very happy about what I created and hope to create many more books. Every day, I also hope to inspire people and remind them to live their lives. I hope you enjoy learning about my life. I am Selena Quantania. I am a singer, songwriter, designer. I was born on April 16th, 1971 in Lake Jackson, Texas. I was born into a Mexican family. I am the youngest daughter of Abraham and Marcelia Quantania. I have two older siblings, my sister Suzette and my brother A.B. My love for music came from my father at nine years old. My father produced the family band Selena y los Dinos. I sold my first album at 12 years old. As for school, I always traveled on my tour bus for gigs, but studied and learned, finally earned my high school diploma. I met my husband, Chris Perez, when he became a part of the band. My career finally broke in early 80s. I became a award-winning artist and best female vocalist. From 1986 to 1996, I won first Grammy in 1994. In 1994, I opened my very first boutique store. I love to design clothing. My life came to an end on March 31st, 1995, due to losing too much blood from gunshot wound. My legacy still lives on through my family and fans. I am considered one of the top 10 most important Latinas in history. I also have my own Selena Day on, on April 16th. This is my music. Hi, my name is Mikhail Kopernik. You know me as Nicholas Copernicus. I was one of the world's most famous astronomers because I invented a theory about how Earth orbited around the sun. Let's begin, shall we? I was born on February 19th, 1473. I lived with my three older sisters, Andrea Copernicus, Barbara Copernicus, and Caitlin Copernicus. My dad died when I was 10 and my mom died when I was 24. I went to one Catholic school and four colleges. Yeah, I was smart. I was never married and had no children, so I had more time to learn. One of my contributions was the resolution on the heavenly spheres. The heavenly spheres was a proof document about how Earth orbited around the sun. But no one believed me until Galileo believed also that Earth orbited around the sun. But even there, it took a hundred years for people to accept my idea. Even though I was a great astronomer, I still did three more jobs. So I 
technically did four jobs. I worked as a mathematician, a lawyer, and a doctor. But sadly, after that, my time was over. I died in the year 1543 on May 21st. I died because of a stroke. Fun facts. Um, in 1503, I defended my doctorate at University of Fern in Canyon Law. I manuscript of the work on the resolution of the hemorrhage spheres stayed a secret for many years. I was a residence man and I knew Latin and Greek. When I was studying in Italy, I got to meet the great Leonardo da Vinci. I used simple instruments for my astronomical observations. I used instruments such as the triton, astrolobe, and square. I didn't use a telescope in any of my observations. In the year 1507, I accompanied my bishop Watson Lobe, Watson Robe, for the crowning of King Zygmunta the First in Krakow. Most people know me because of my kindness, my acting career, but I know myself as Audrey Hepburn. I'm about to tell you the story of my life. My real name is Audrey Kathleen Rustin, but I changed it to Audrey Hepburn. I was born May 4th, 1929 in Exile, Belgium, where my father worked as a Nazi guard. I had two brothers, Ian and Arnad. My dad didn't really stay around in our childhood. He left when I was around five. My mom started to date Joseph Victor Anthony Rustin, who was a banker. I started to find my love for dance when I got my big break, when I started to be a model and a dancer. The person who discovered me was a French novelist, but it was not until 1948 when I decided to go professional. A lot of people know me because of my acting career, because I was in 20 plus movies. My well-known movies are Breakfast at Tiffany's, Roman Holiday, and My Fair Lady. My family was wealthy and paid for my college. I went to Arham Controversy. I donated a lot of money to local charities around my city. I donated money to the UNICEF, which is a charity that goes to kids. I was a goodwill ambassador, that is a person that does good things for global issues. I also tried to make my sons happier without me. I wanted them to grow up to have a normal childhood. Closer to when I got married to Mel Furrier in 1969, we had a child, C. Furrier. And later, in 1982, we got a divorce, and I married Andrea Dottie, and we also had a son, Luca Dottie. <clears throat> I started, I used to own a pet deer, because when I was shooting a movie, they didn't know what to do with it, so I took it home. My favorite color is cyan, and my favorite meal is spaghetti al pomodoro. I loved many things, like my family and my job, but sadly, I died on January 20th, 1993, from, from apex cancer, spreading before I could get to it. I was 63 years old, and I wish I was around longer. That is my life story, and I'd love to tell it again some tape. Thank you for listening. Do you know what's a little black dress? Well, it's a famous worldwide dress. Well, you're probably thinking, if it's that of a popular dress, it came from a rich family. Well, you're wrong. You're also probably wondering, what's my name? I'm Coco Chanel. I came from a poor family and, and became a very well-known designer. My products are well-known, and I'm proud of it. I was born August 19th, 1883, in a poor family. I had a really hard early life. At the age of 12, my mother died. After my mother's death, my father abandoned me and my, and my siblings. We stayed at the orphanage for over seven years. I was taught by, and was taught by nuns. I never wanted to go to college. When I stayed at the orphanage, I learned how to sew. At the age of 18, I, I left the orphanage for the first time and was ready to create, create a shop. And that's when my story begins. At the age of twenty, at the age of twenty, I opened my first shop. It was a simple little hat shop. In the middle of my career, World War II came, so I closed, so I closed my shop and fired all my workers. After the war ended, I moved to Switzerland, but soon after, I created another shop. I had one lover named Chapel. Sadly, he died at the age of thirty-eight after a car accident. Chapel at first helped me with my first shop. 
Chapel also created clothing, but for polo players. After that, I never got another lover. I was heartbroken. Sadly, I died at the age of 87. Nowadays, you can see and buy my products. My name is the one and only Jackie Chan, and I am from Hong Kong. I have went to the school named Peking Opera School. My parents left me when I was little, but it didn't stop me from who I am now. When I was eight years old, I started in my first ever movie. I have married the love of my life, and I have voiced in Kung Fu Panda. Also, I have been in more than 100 movies. In my early life, I have went through lots of tough work, and I couldn't get help at school because my parents left me. I was all alone all these years at Peking Opera School with no one to help me. But when I was eight, I started my first ever movie. It was a blast. I have made lots of contributions to this world, one of them being a charity. Yes, I donated to a charity to help Hadi earthquake victims. I give about 5 million RMB, 730 to 100,000 US dollars. I also have worked with Wild Aid to help endanger tigers. So you see, I've made lots of contributions to this world. I may be old, but I'm still doing fun things in my life, like raising my kids and watching movies I started in. <clears throat> right now, I live in Hollywood, California, and I'm getting to meet amazing people and fans. Also spending time with my family, including me, my wife, and my kids. I still have a long life ahead of me. I'm five foot eight inches high. My net is worth $400 million because of my acting and skills. For now, I just love spending my time with my kids and my wife. I can't wait for what the future will be. Thank you for watching. Whoever is happy will make others happy too. That is what me and Frank said during my life back in 1929. I may have lived a short life, but I have an interesting life added to it. I wrote in my diary about what happened while me and my family went hiding when the Nazis sent us to camps. It was scary hiding from them, but we managed two years of it before we got caught. Just listen and you'll hear about my wild life. My life was great before I went hiding. I was born on June 12, 1929. I went to six Montessori school and I was born in Frankfurt, Germany with my mom and my dad. I also have my sister, Margaret. My family was pretty wealthy. After all, my dad had a pretty important job. He was a businessman. We lived in an apartment all together. You may be wondering what is so special about me. Well, I got a diary for my 13th birthday. That is one thing I am famous for, writing in my diary. It got published after my family got found hiding. It all started when my sister was summoned to concentration camp. My family went hiding in an attic at an apartment. The whole time, I wrote in my diary about my experiences throughout my life. After two years, me and my family were caught by the Nazis. Me, my sister, and my mom went to concentration camp while my dad was set free. February 1945, me and my sister died from typhus fever. Soon after our death, my mom died of starvation. I changed the world with my diary. It got published and so many people read it. My real name is Annalise Mary Frank. Anne is just a nickname. My life is so interesting, and I hope it was to you too. Bye-bye. How dare you? You have stolen my dreams and my childhood with your empty words. Hi. My name is Greta Thunberg and I am 17 years old. I know I am very young, but I am an environmental activist and I care about climate change very much. My mission is to stop climate change while also educating people to how climate change isn't okay. I'm trying to put a stop to this so people can breathe fresh air again. I was born on January 23rd, 2003 in Stockholm, Sweden. My parents are Savanti Thunberg and Melina Ernman. My mother is an opera singer and my father is an actor. They are happy for what I'm doing, but sometimes they are also worried. Ever since I was eight, I was so focused on climate change that I started protesting in August 2018. I have donated from my Greta Thunberg Foundation to stop climate change or at least help it. Just recently, I have donated $100,000 to help COVID-19 for children who have to stay inside in these tough times. I'd say I'm a very successful person and I have enough money to help all these things for me to protest and give speeches how climate change isn't good. I'm still trying to help climate change, but now it's finally getting better. I'm now living peacefully with my parents today, carefree. I will soon be an adult with more responsibilities and tasks to help this. I'm very happy to hear climate change and COVID-19 are getting better each day while everyone is calming down.
My greatest accomplishment I have done is I've made an impact on other people to protest during global warming. That has helped a lot of animals, inspired people to start helping out in this huge world.